Well, hello everybody and welcome to episode 9 of the official Cyblogs podcast. Um, once again, I'm joined by Calvin Baxter this week. I'm Amy Woodcroft because Elf is still away. We're hoping to have him back next week, um, should he not have been taken out by any pirates. So, welcome, Calvin. Hello. <laughs> um, diving straight in this week, uh, what, what are we looking at first? Oh, we're well, looking at tearing the universe a new hole. <laughs> we are with indeed. lasers. Yeah, yeah, always with the lasers on this show. Is, is it, do you always have laser stories, or is it just while I'm here? Whenever possible, lasers and spaceships are good. We like them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is really interesting. So, I, I, I'm sure everybody remembers when they started up the Large Hadron Collider a couple of years back. People were like, "Mini black holes. They're going to rip apart the fabric of space-time. Disaster, disaster." Well. Some scientists are actually going to do that now, on, on purpose. Uh, Colin, want to tell us a bit more about it? Well, yeah, they're just going to uh, take a, a bunch of very, very powerful lasers, ten of them, and fire them all into the very, uh, very, very small space, using a huge amount of energy mm. for a very short amount of time. Uh, I think you've got some figures on just how much energy they're we, going to use. We do. It's 200 petawatts now. For people who don't think in that amount of number, the world's energy consumption at the moment is sitting at about 15 terawatts. Um, 200 petawatts is a little bit more than 100,000 times that amount. So, but it's one one trillionth of a uh, one sixteenth of a second. No, one trillionth no, of a second. Uh, yeah, it's uh, in the realms of a, a trillionth of a second. second. So, uh, yeah, but but 100,000 uh, times the world's annual energy consumption. Uh, it's less than a trillion of a second. It's fairly impressive. <laughs> and why are they doing in, in the In the hope, basically, that they'll um, tear apart space-time and get a chance to have a look at what comes out. Indeed. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, point you, you guys to the link on the whole article should you, should you want to get to uh, know a lot more about this. But the whole idea is, is basically that they're looking for what they call ghost particles, which is basically the idea is that at the very fundamental levels of space, particles pop in and out of existence all the time, and they borrow little bits of energy to do that, and then sort of give that energy back when, when they annihilate each other and pass out of existence again. And the idea is that this laser could hold them apart for a, a, a enough time for them to be detected, mm. um, which is a, is a pretty cool idea. Um, <laughs> and this is the, this is the, the physics that goes on uh, just basically on the, the surface, just outside the singularity of a black hole. Yeah. This is Hawking radiation Absolutely. that we're talking about here. Uh, really interesting stuff. So they've got the, um, the prototype lasers are now being built in the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Romania. And the idea is to see them commissioned in 2015. Um, so there's going to be a lot of excitement about that. But, but I imagine a lot of people as well sort of well, you saying know, what what could go wrong? What could possibly <laughs> what go could wrong? Possibly you know, go wrong with firing holes in the space firing tank. ten incredibly <laughs> powerful lasers all in one spot in in the hope of tearing a hole in space time. Indeed, um, of course. Well, whatever can go wrong, it's going to be interesting. Absolutely, and and you know, if if it becomes Cthulhu and the Elder Gods, we're we're okay. We're we're prepared for that. Absolutely, I bring them on. Yeah, bring them on. <laughs> Right, well, uh, moving on to something slightly more prosaic, but nonetheless pretty cool. Um, NASA is, sorry, Boeing, in fact, has set up what they're calling the Orbiter Processing Facility 3 at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and they're going to be manufacturing a crew transport spacecraft, the idea being that it'll launch to the International Space Station. So Boeing is now providing space planes. Kind of thing. Yeah, and... Um Am I allowed to say, color me unimpressed? <laughs> it, it doesn't really, you know, look like much beyond what they were putting up 40 years ago. No. Um, I'm very unimpressed with the American attitude to space since they got bored with it. Yes, it is very um, sad. And they, they tend to put very long time scales on doing really quite unimaginative and... Um, oh, what's, what, what's the word? Unambitious things. Well, yeah. After after the haters of the the sixties and seventies, it just feels like they ran out of energy, and so yeah. now that now now it's limping along. Nonetheless, though, um, these these uh, 
CST 100 as they call it. Apparently, it's going to create um, several hundred jobs, which is always nice, particularly in the space industry, where I get the impression they're mostly losing jobs. Mm. Um, and the, they will carry. I'm just looking at the stats here. Uh, they said I think they can carry seven people. So yes, the idea will be they'll be the new ferry or one of the new ferries between um, the ISS since uh, NASA decommissioned all of the shuttles. So NASA now is no longer able to shuttle people back and forth. backwards and forwards, mm. which seems unfortunate. We'll mm. see. <laughs> we'll be watching. But, uh, you know, well well done, Boeing, for, for getting in there when apparently nobody else was. Um, cool. All right. Uh, Calvin, what have we got up next? You'll have to wait for me to press the next button on my browser, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is an excellent story. How much do you think the internet weighs? I don't know. Lots or nothing. Depending on how you measure it. Well, do you know how much the internet weighs in strawberries? <laughs> The, the, the SR unit for weight of the data. The I'd like to say a punnet, just because the word amuses me. <laughs> it's less than a punnet. <laughs> it's a fraction of a punnet. It's Good approximately, goodness. depending on how you measure it, if you're just talking about the information on the internet itself, it's about a strawberry. Fantastic. But if you're talking about all the information held on the computers that are attached to the internet, not just the servers, it's possibly up to five strawberries. My God. The horror. <laughs> uh, now, all of this comes from a really interesting video, which again we'll link to. Um, always go and look at cyblogs.co.nz forward slash TOSP, uh, where we put the links for each episode as, as it goes up. But this is a really interesting video. Um, how much does the internet weigh? And this gentleman talks about the different ways of measuring it. So as Calvin's just taken you through the, the strawberry measurement, um, which is a fascinating way to, to, to do things. But he also looks at some other ways to measure it, which, which end up at, a, at an imaginably small number. Mm, basically, it's just looking at the number of electrons involved in the entire process. Okay. Um, it started out on a work, trying to work out how much additional mass was gained on a Kindle <laughs> if you loaded it up with books, <laughs> um, which worked out to be trillions of times smaller than our most sensitive scale. Mm, which makes sense. I mean, you don't ever have to worry that your pockets are going to be heavier because you chucked on some extra books onto your e-reader, right? Well, it, it's, it's actually uh, millions of times heavier if you charge the battery up. Mm. I don't mean that millions of times heavier. And this just goes to show how you can mess with statistics. I don't mean to say it's millions of times heavier than a single Kindle, <laughs> but there are millions of times more weight um, by the, the energy in the battery than the data yeah. stored. Fascinating. I'd never even considered that, you know, charging a battery might make it more massive. It, yeah, it yeah. is so slightly heavier. It's, it's a fantastic concept. So yeah, go and have a look at the video. It's certainly food for thought. Um, I have had a couple of people say to me, ah, oh, but what about all the hardware associated with the internet? But there's possibly the argument to be made there that that's not the internet, that's the support structures of yeah. the internet. Yes. The internet is the information contained within all of these yeah, well, those things. those support structures are constantly changing. Exactly. Um, those servers are getting more powerful, more numerous, uh, taking less energy per process, yeah. doing more processes per exactly. second all the time. It's fluid. And the, the, the computing platform that it's on can be changing. I mean, it, the, it wouldn't be a very fast internet, but this could all run on valves. Just about, yeah. Giant, giant, massive rooms, factories <laughs> full of valve-powered computers. Amazing. Admittedly, it would be a small version of the internet, but, you know. But it would be a version of it, a version you know, sort of alpha. <laughs> but would that be a lighter internet because it had less electrons involved in it? You go. Oh, although it may be a heavier. Although it may be a heavier yeah. internet because valves would have a lot of in uh, valves, not just the valves themselves, but all the electrons flowing around between yeah, the plates on true. the valves would number more valves per <laughs> trans uh, more electrons per transistor effect going oh, on. Oh my! Um, yeah, so a fun story. Certainly something to to go and ask your friends. You would see what they think. Um, I, I think the funniest thing I've seen about uh, around this quantification of the internet was somebody was required by their maths or economics professor to come up with the value of the internet. Said student posted the question on the internet at which, you know, boing boing or whatever it was, everybody went berserk over answering it. But, but the best answer I ever saw was the internet costs 
one internet. <laughs> or it's worth one internet. And it was an engineer who came up with it, and it was all of a, you, you know, you need to pick your, your metrics. Yeah. You <laughs> it's, it's like the answer to the, uh, the, the, the question of, you know, uh, what's the probability of life arising from a primordial soup? It's one. Mm. We're here. It's happened. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. That is the probability. <laughs> Absolutely. So good, good, uh, good stuff. Fun, fun things to think about. 